Hello there, Ray here, and I made an automatic cobweb farm using the new 1.21 potions. You can brew these potions by using another wort on water bottles, then cobwebs in order to turn it into the new weaving potion. Then once made them into splash potions and using some gunpowder, they can be thrown onto mobs for a new potion effect. You can see the particles coming off them kind of look like little cobwebs. And anything with this effect that happens to die will end up trying to place in some cobwebs, which can be harvested in survival for a now renewable way to get it. The cobweb block has so many unique properties which makes it great to have in large amounts. So now that it's a renewable resource in the world, I'm definitely going to have fun putting it into more types of builds. Besides that, you guys know me, I'm designing an automatic farm for every single item in the game of Minecraft. You can check out this entire playlist in my current progress, but we're over 97% to completing it. From beacons to mob heads, if you're ever wondering how to farm up some type of item in the game, this spreadsheet will show it all and even a video about each of the farms to go along with it. The way I got my automatic web farm to work is by using a lot of different tricks. First, when it comes to how big an area the cobwebs will be placed in. It does this in a 7x7 box centered on the block the mob is standing on. So I took advantage of this by designing an automatic farm. The way it works is that we first need to have some type of mob to kill in order to convert them over into cobwebs. One of the easiest mobs to get in abundance is Endermen here in the end dimension. Since I have it built in the void 8 chunks away from the main end island, whenever the game wants to spawn in some hostile mobs, that island is too far away, so the only thing that is nearby is our spawning platform here. And this way we can get tons of mobs that we can kill in order to convert over to cobwebs without having to do a lot of extra work. Another possible contender instead of using Endermint could be zombified piglins. But with them being in the nether dimension, we can't have access to water, which really makes this farm quite cheap and simple to build up. And since we already need a player in order to harvest the webs as items, the player is also being used to spawn in the mobs at least 24 blocks away on this platform. We're pulling them all towards the center using my same Endermen farm setup as this video here. And then we got a whole bunch of Endermen, which is perfect. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the other crazy farms I've designed. So now that we have an unlimited source of mobs, we just need to hit these guys with the new potion of weaving. Of course, I automated this process by using a dispenser here, which has the potions inside of it. But instead of just dropping one potion onto one enderman at a time and killing them for only a small amount of webs, it makes sense to try to get as many endermen to get splashed with a single potion. That way we can make it more efficient per potion. So when the endermen come down, they're not just all sitting in a single location, but instead if we turn on on hitboxes we can see that they spread out into four little groups. This way we don't get as much max cramming. This happens when entities go in groups greater than 24. So with them getting split up into individual groups we can reach the mob cap which is slightly over 70 mobs typically with a single player here rather than being able to only put in 24. So we can easily have the farm running at the mob cap and by the time the player harvests all the cobwebs we can easily refill it for the next round. So then afterwards we splash them with the potion and then we kill them. Now they don't have to die from the player, we can use natural means such as this lava bucket here. And these mobs are placing their cobwebs on this platform down here. Now in the example you can see that they could place the cobwebs on multiple levels, but to keep this farm simple, we're just harvesting them from a single layer. Now they just don't appear on top of any type of block, they do need to be a surface that is a full square, such as like top slabs or full blocks, but they won't spawn on top of things like slabs or on top of weird blocks like trapdoors. Leave a like on the video for renewable cobwebs! But despite it placing in cobwebs an entire 7 blocks thick, the player itself can only reach out 5 or 6 blocks depending on where they're standing. So with the player here you can see they can reach all the way out and break cobwebs 5 blocks away. So we can't reach the entire 7 blocks. And this is why I have the player going in a circle with the water here. As they're going on this backside here we can sneak in a extra 6 row of cobwebs that can spawn on this one. We do lose 1 row right here for the water but it's still better than just doing these 5 rows here. Now the tool needed in order to get the cobwebs is the shear and the shear doesn't mine them too quickly. Now you could enchant it with some unbreaking and some efficiency to speed it up as well as some mending to constantly repair it or a beacon with haste effect but it's so much cheaper just to give the player a new shears which come over here from this dispenser. 
So using my simple iron farm, which you can even build here in the end dimension, combined with the auto crafter, you can automatically craft some shears and have them being put into this chest, or you can just craft a bunch ahead of time and place them in. And since we're using unenchanted shears, we do need to make the player go fairly slow so they have time to mine up all the cobwebs. I do this by having the player being moved around with some water streams. This is cheaper than using minecarts or redstone. But in order for the player to mine stuff while being inside of water, which does occur in a couple locations like right here, the player actually has a special helmet with the enchantment aqua affinity. This enchantment lets you mine stuff at the same speed no matter if you're underwater or in the air. Otherwise the speed is greatly reduced. Now when the player breaks their shear, you can see that it can occur at any point while they're harvesting a round. Right now you can see the player is just trying to break the cobwebs by hand, but their hand is open. But once they come to the end here, they're going to touch this pressure plate here, which is going to activate some redstone. And this is going to drop out a new shears, which gets picked up by the player so they can continue harvesting some web. The redstone is fairly simple. When the player steps on the pressure plate, it locks this hopper. But at the same time, it comes around and powers these droppers. With this dropper, we're putting the shear out over here, but it can't get picked up by the hopper because it's being locked when the player is nearby. And the shear will sit there for a little while until the player can pick it up before the hopper does. But if the player doesn't pick up the shear, you can see after the player leaves and gets off that pressure plate, the hopper unlocks, picks it back up, and puts in this dropper over here. This dropper will then push it back over into this dropper here when a free slot is opened up. Now the update order on this currently allows it so that when shear is dropped out here, this one will instantly replace it rather than these shears from this hopper here getting pushed in ahead of time. If you have problems with the shears piling up down here, you can always put in a locking system which will lock this hopper until this dropper is empty. And then once it's empty, you can have it release all these extra shears up above to refill it. But there's few challenges when it comes to using water to move the player. Depending on how thick the water is, depends on how much it's going to actually push you. So when the water starts getting really thin, the player actually starts moving slower. To try to make the farm as efficient as possible, we want the player to be constantly moving, but not moving so slow that they're actually not mining anything. To do this, I switch between using normal blocks under the water and soul sand. The soul sand will make the player move slower, but when it gets to the really thin water, I switch it out and put in some normal blocks, otherwise they would just go extremely slow at this point here. We also have to watch out with this water that we're using to wash the items, so it doesn't actually connect up with the water we're using to push the player around. Since I couldn't come in with another water source up above, because it would connect with the water over here, the player then falls into this water source, stands on top of this boat, which puts him high enough so he can also scoot over top of this block here and end up in this new water stream which will continue to push him as I put in a diagonal water stream here which will help pull the player from one water stream into the new one. And despite this entire water system looking very simple, it was extremely annoying to make it work perfectly. As it only took me a little less than two hours to design the majority of the farm, but it took me several hours to get the water and the player speed perfect so that they wouldn't miss any cobwebs while at the same time not going too extremely slow, making it inefficient. Now the way the player is able to pick up items while also having its hand free when it breaks its shear in order to pick up a new shear is that its inventory is already full of cobwebs to start with so when the shear is dispensed it can easily pick it up and continue going. Now when the player comes on the background here we do have them get aligned with this trap door here that way they're not so far back so they can't reach the third cobweb in the row here. This is important because we want the player to mine three cobwebs going that direction and then three cobwebs when they're coming back. By dividing the workload up, we're able to have the player work going both directions. I also designed it to be efficient while simple. The way I did this is by collecting the items with a simple and cheap method, just by using some water, rather than using something like hopper minecarts or some other type of complex redstone. And this is also done by the same pressure plate which drops out a new shears. This pressure plate also comes over here to this torch here which goes into some redstone back here after a short delay. These trap doors are normally always powered so they hold back the water. But during the short period which a player is standing on the pressure plate it releases the water. This gives enough time for the items to get sent all the way across to the opposite side. Then the items get washed over here and they're perfectly going to be dropped into this water stream, the same one that the player is using. I reused it in order to transport the items over to here. Now just underneath this boat here, I have two hoppers which are picking up all the loot and putting into these chests over here. 
And you can see we're getting tons and tons of cobwebs. We're also getting some ender pearls from when the endermen die. And whenever the player breaks its shear and is unable to break the cobwebs, we can get some string from that as well. Now this third chest here is actually picking up stuff from above the soul sand here. And this is the soul sand which is holding up the dripstone point, which the endermen are falling on top of. The dripstone point is probably one of the most expensive things in this entire build. And in my Enderman farm, I talk about how you can even switch that out by just dropping the Enderman a little bit further. And I'll have that video linked below if you want to try that design. I also have a soul sand block just behind it as well. This is because when the water comes in to wash items, they can get pushed up against the dripstone point. But depending on where the point is, they could get stuck there. And this just lets the hoppers underneath pick them up and store them away. Now the same redstone that activates the water also comes over here and pulls back this piston and observer and then it will release it once the water is pulled back in again and then this power just goes into a little bit of delay which we're using to first activate and drop out a weaving potion which will then hit the enderman in front and then after a bit more delay we'll come over here and power this dispenser which is the one that has lava bucket then after another delay we're going to go ahead and pull that lava back in. So you can see that all the redstone here is actually ran on the clock of the player moving in a circle. Now depending if you're having the dripstone point over here or if you choose to have something else, the player can then reach the last cobweb in the very center here. Otherwise the dripstone point is a bit random in where it actually sits, which ultimately affects if the player can actually break this last cobweb. Now this randomness also will determine where exactly you want your enemy to be standing because you want them to fall and hit onto the point without falling off the edge and falling into the water which will be washing on the side. Notice that this point is more to the left and because of that I decided to put in the wall over here on the left hand side as well as on this side. And this works fine as the endermen don't fall off of the actual point while still giving them enough room to spread out so they don't take max cramming. Now you might notice that once in a while they take damage and they can actually teleport out. This is because I didn't bother to teleport proof this platform here, but if the endermen become annoying you could always do that. But they typically will just end up pathfinding over here onto this platform and then the water will just kill them since they're already low health. Or you could come in with some magma blocks to keep them from standing on top of this here. And sometimes when they take damage they will also end up at the very top here. But when they fall the second time, they'll usually die because they're already low health as well. But if they do teleport out and then die, they could drop off a piece of web here. So far, I haven't seen any web spawn up here, but it's probably a good thing to check every few hours to see if you have a massive clog of web blowing down your endermen from walking in. I also threw down some light sources around the platform. That way endermen aren't spawning on it while you're walking out here or flying out here. Now, unlike the shears, which you can actually auto craft to get an infinite source of them, you can't do this when it comes to the weaving potions. This is because they take nether wart, which has to be manually replanted by the player, as well as they take blaze rods for the brewing stands to actually work. And blaze rods are only dropped by blazes that are killed by player means. Otherwise, you can always just store up a whole bunch of blaze powder as well as the nether wart and having the rest of the process being automated and put into your system here. But the main thing that limits how long you can AFK in this farm is actually the player here. This is because when you break a block, you're going to go ahead and remove some saturation, which is slowly going to remove your hunger. This player has been going at it for a while, even though their hunger bar is actually completely full. You can see their saturation bar, which is a hidden bar that you can't see, has dropped from 20 down to just 6. When it gets down to 0, this is when it's going to start removing hunger bar, and then when the hunger bar is completely gone, it's going to start removing heart. And if you're playing on hard difficulty, you can actually starve to death this way. Otherwise, you're playing on normal and easy, you don't have to worry about the player dying. So the best thing to do before AFKing is to come in and eat some food, that way your saturation is at the maximum before going into this farm. Or you could use a region beacon as another option. But the real thing that stops you from AFKing long periods of time is actually the player's inventory. Notice that when they are breaking the cobwebs, they're standing really close and they're picking them up inside their inventory. Now you could completely fill your inventory so that you couldn't pick up any cobwebs, but the problem is that when you come in and break your shear, then you would open up a new slot and the cobwebs would sit in that slot. And the next time you tried to pick up some new shears from this over here, you wouldn't be able to, which would end your process of farming. So before going AFK, 
you want to go ahead and fill up the majority of your inventory with a single line of cobwebs just by holding a stack and then holding down a right click as you move across. We're also going to put in part of a row of ender pearls because you can pick those up from the endermen and part of a row of some string which can also occur. Then in the very last inventory slot, we're going to come in and put in our shears over here. You also want to put on your aqua affinity helmet. Now you're ready to go AFK. It's not too bad, you just have to hop in here and then try to aim as straight as possible. You can use F3 to kind of see your current yaw and pitch. That's these two numbers right here. Depending on which way you build the farm, I'd recommend building it the same as I have it here, but this should be about 0, 0 or as close as you can get. That way when you come in front of some cobwebs, you can easily break them all the way to the very back side. But over time, your inventory is going to eventually fill up with cobwebs just from the ones you pick up along the edge here. But I did try to make sure that the majority of the cobwebs get washed over only after the player is far enough away so they won't pick them up. The next thing that could stop your farm is your chest could fill up. As I built this as low as possible over here in the world, that way we get some really fast spawns on top of the platform there. It does mean we don't have as much area for collection down here. You can always come in with some droppers and a water stream to put in a larger collection system. Otherwise, just make sure to clear out these chests before going AFK, because if the chests don't pick up the items, they're just going to fill up the player's inventory even faster. Now you could come in with a collection system to try to immediately pick up the items before they fill up the player's inventory, but webs won't be placed directly on top of hoppers. But they will be placed on top of soul sand, so you can put some soul sand in and some hoppers underneath if you want to try to pick up the items before the player does. But ultimately, I try to keep this farm simple while being efficient, though the current design will work for most people. So after AFKing this farm for one entire hour, we can go ahead and take a look at the loot it produces. And you can see how much cobwebs we get which is an insane amount all just within an hour and even this chest here. There's also a bunch of pearls and don't forget our actual inventory as we picked up many stacks of cobwebs. So in one hour it produces around 2,800 cobwebs which is great so you don't have to run the farm too often to get large amounts. You also get some string and there's also a bunch of pearls you get along with it. It also used up a double chest worth of potions as well as two thirds of this one. But it only used up about a row of shears. And based off how fast we were picking up the cobwebs, it looks like the player's inventory would probably fill up in about two hours. And then anything extra would stop you from picking up a new shear. So if you want to AFK longer than two hours, you'll have to come in with the other collection systems. But during the time, I didn't actually lose any hunger bar, so I didn't have to worry about starving to death. If I make any changes to this farm or if it needs to be updated, the newest version will be in the description. Also, if you want to check out the world download or the schematic, that's also there. See how I designed an automatic farm for every single item in the game with this playlist here? And if you've ever used my farm, consider joining as a YouTube member. This really helps me out and lets me put time into designing all these useful farms. Plus, you get your name here on the screen at the end of every video. Otherwise, you can always just share my videos with your favorite Minecrafter. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!